And um, as you'll be aware that the, the whole purpose of doing this Farm Trip Friday um, uh, is basically to increase the knowledge of the tourism product that we have across the district. And I suppose, um, especially over the last 18 months, there has been um, a rise in the, the product that is on offer. So it's really important that we all know what is out there and um, that we can support each other in, um, in our business development and, and work together to I suppose, to, to show the visitor what is on offer here in the destination. Um, so basically, just to give you an outline, I've, I've roughly um, looked at this, that we have Lisa Johnson from the forum, who's going to take us through the first part of the, the session with promoting your experience. We have Cathy McGovern then from Wild Dining. I'm hoping Cathy will join us. Cathy had um, her Wild Dining in the Marble Arch Caves and I was saying at three o'clock I um she was online sending me messages from last night so I hope that um she'll be awake and with us. Um, and we have Jack Henderson from um Earn Adventures or Castle Archdale um, who's going to take us through the hydro bike and dying experience that they're um, working on as well. So with that I'm just going to hand over to Lisa and um, Lisa will take you through this say the first part of the session. Okay, hello everybody. Good to see some of you again. Um, yes, I'm going to take you through now. This is promoting your experience. So, um, okay, next slide. So basically what we're going to cover today is um, what is a brand? How to develop a compelling brand story, types of marketing collateral, hints and tips and content creation, and then just trying to kind of think uh, about getting ready for 2020 as we kind of finish off the year here. So what is a brand? Uh, a brand can mean many things to many different people and I work in a branding industry so I have lots of kind of clients who come in and sometimes a brand for them is just a new logo um, and it can be a name but it can be anything at all but for me what a brand is is what what somebody feels about you or your product and it's that kind of lasting memory that they have um, so I've kind of summarised it there in terms of uh, what this author and speaker has highlighted, which is a brand is a person's gut feeling about a product, service or an organisation. So logo not only in isolation makes a brand. A brand is made up of lots of different touch points and it's simply a promise, a promise that you're going to deliver um, what you've said that you will. And a brand, as I said, made up of lots of different touch points. Um, so any any time your brand kind of communicates with a with a consumer or visitor, it's that lasting memory that they have, um, and that's why we need to generate compelling brand stories. So as you can see there in the little infographic, it can be anything to do with kind of the design of your logo. It can be the value proposition that you're offering, your strategy, um, and all the different marketing collateral goes with it. So it's a very diverse and deep kind of um, topic of conversation, but essentially it is for me anyway just the impact that you have uh, on somebody whenever they come into contact with your business. Okay, so this is uh, what's called the golden circle and some of you may have seen it before. Um, I can't take the credit for this. There's a guy called Simon Sinak and he is a thought leader, but the way he kind of uh, com communicates the importance of your why kind of really resonated with me and, and lots of people globally. Um, and it really forces us to kind of think about why we do what we do and he would talk about you know we all fall into kind of a bit of a trap whereby we very easily articulate what we do um, and how we do it but actually getting really under the skin in terms of why we do what we do is the most important thing because that's whenever the emotional connection comes in whenever you're talking to a new client or a customer or a visitor so we really need to delve deep and try and really force out what our why is, why we do what we do, why do we get up in the morning, you know, what makes us tick whenever we're going out to run our businesses um, and why do we do it over doing anything else. So an example of that that I kind of thought of this morning was a lady I came across um, in South Armagh who's called Rosie Bell and Rosie Bell is a lace maker um, and for want of a better kind of terminology I suppose it was a hobby of hers um, because she did have her own career. But um, whenever you speak to Rosie, you know, she doesn't really start with what she does. Um, she starts with why she does what she does. And that really, I mean, as I talk about it here now, I can still kind of get tingles whenever I hear her talk about her passion for what she does. So if we were to look at Rosie as an example, um, down in Colourville, what we would say would be the what for her uh, is that she makes lace. So in the very simple essence, that's what she does. That's kind of the output of her experience. The how she does it is what makes her a little bit different, I suppose, than anybody else that also makes lace. 
so the, the her for her the how is the fact that she does it with her own designs so she's not taking any templates um, and she's kind of matching together the contemporary aspect and um, with the old-fashioned kind of styles as well so that's how she does what she does that makes her different to anybody else but then whenever you start to explore why she does it that's whenever the real emotional connection comes in because she tells a story about being kind of a fourth generation lace maker. She tells a story about ladies, women all sitting around, the sense of community that they have whenever they're learning how to make lace um, and the friendship. And, you know, they come to those kind of gatherings and they share their, their tr troubles and their strifes and the good times and the bad times. Um, and that's really what makes her tick. That's why she does what she does. And she talks about the lace making being part of her, you know, it's kind of in her in her heart and soul and she can't imagine not doing it. And that her passion then to share it with people um, and, and help them learn how to, how to make lace as well. So that's kind of a little example of exploring the depth of why you do what you do. And whenever you do that, then you'll be able to build a much more compelling brand story um, uh, for your business. So next slide. So if we kind of um, discover why we do what we do, then I suppose it's really important then to take that into uh, what you really are about as a brand and what you need to know as, as being a brand, because we're all brands, you know, we all have personal brands and business brands, and it's all that perception of how, how people relate to us. So we've discovered our why, that's our mission, that's what we're kind of here to do, um, and we've kind of uh, looked into that. And then think about what your values are. So what supports that? Why? What is the values and the beliefs of your company? And this doesn't have to be an exercise that takes a long time. You know, it could be literally five minutes where you're just jotting down what are, what are the values that really make your business tick? You know, so it could be things like, you know, sincerity could be really important or authenticity could be important. Honesty, you know, all those things that kind of make your business what it is um, and, and the core that drives you forward. In terms of brand personality, then, if you think about your brand as a person, what kind of personality would they have? So if we think even looking at it, uh, I was thinking this morning about um, chefs. So if you think of the kind of the personality of Mary Berry compared to the personality of Jamie Oliver, you know, they're quite different in their styles of cooking. They're different in their approach. Jamie's quite quirky, quirky and fun and engaging, where Mary's a little bit more serious. Uh, very motherly, very kind. So if you think about your brand personality, who would you be if you were a, a celebrity or, or a person? And that might help you kind of start to develop the language with which you would talk talk um, whenever you're online and creating your marketing collateral. Um, then looking at that unique position. So what makes you different from anybody else? We talked about Rosie there a little minute ago. And what makes her different from any other lace maker is the fact that she kind of does her own design. So that's her uniqueness. So what is it about your brand and about your business that makes you different than anybody else? And you'll hear this talked about so much through Embrace the Giant Spirit credentials, you know, find that unique thing about you and what, by what you do that will bring people uh, uh, to your business and to your, your visitor attraction or experience. And then your brand voice. So once you've developed the personality, it's that tone of voice. How would you communicate? Um, and as I say, this then kind of flows into that marketing collateral bit and uh, the social media, your website uh, and how you talk. Are you going to talk with this very serious tone of voice? Because the experience that you're offering actually has quite a lot of, um, you know, kind of maybe academic background. So you need to be kind of on the money with that. Or are you going to be fun and quirky? So it's just kind of de developing you know, what you feel comfortable with. Um, and as I say, this process shouldn't take forever to do. It probably comes from the gut. So you could spend half an hour just kind of jotting down the things that, that mean, mean the most about your brand. OK, Karen. So this is a little example then of, of how communicating what you do um, is important in our industry. And I came across uh, this this uh, couple online. So that's the granddaughter. And then we've got Nona Narina. Now, Nana Narina um, has become somewhat of a celebrity from what I can see and she started out obviously making pasta um, just outside her hometown in Rome and uh, it's all about rolling by hand and her daughter really enjoyed doing this with her and then was inviting other people to do it with her and now it seems to be that in Italy there's a whole raft of nonnas that are actually doing these uh, Italian uh, pasta making experiences so it's lovely how it has kind of evolved over time um, but I think it's a really, really lovely story. And I think once we show you the video here, you'll kind of see how the granddaughter communicates the why and also how Nonna Narina 
communicates why she does what she does. OK, Karen, if you want to go on, have, have a wee look. Oh, you need to go back, I think. So, oh. <laughs> Doesn't want to play, does it? The memory. The memory is something very short. And we need to keep our eye where we come from so we will know where to go. Well, Giuliana, I have a certain that you feel alone. You feel alone, but you have to react, to get out and to find the company. This is Italy. Everybody thinks their grandma is the best pasta maker. But my grandma is the queen. <laughs> if you can hear the sound of her touching the flowers, crack the eggs, I think that 99% of people can recognize something from their own childhood. I think there is a kind of art therapy there. Bello, stendi la pasta, falla. È una cosa bella. A me piace. So there you go. Um, and I think it's just a lovely video. And obviously Airbnb have kind of caught on to the the kind of the, the emotion around what the experience is there that the guys are delivering just outside Rome. And I suppose that's where we're, where we're trying to get to, you know, that kind of heartfelt emotion uh, to communicate to our visitors and why we're special and the, the sense of kind of joy and enthusiasm around that. So um, as I say, she's somewhat of a celebrity. She's got her own Facebook page. She's got a uh, website and all the rest. And she's been doing a lot of stuff on online, obviously, through lockdown. So it's a really nice uh, example. So developing that brand story, um, just to kind of summarise that all up then, it is the thing that will help you break through the noise over your competitors. And like yourselves, you know, we've probably all been on quite a few webinars over the last little while. Uh, they've been run by TNI through their TED. Um, uh, program and what they're saying is that 2022 is going to be really competitive so probably 2021 we knew there'd be a lot of staycation activity and hopefully then on the pluses and minuses as, 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 as uh, travel plans kind of open up hopefully once we get through the restrictions here heading towards this, this side of the, the year and um, there will be more competition you know people will uh, venture a little bit further so we need to make sure that uh, we get our communications right and we've got time to do that now kind of over December and January before we head into high season for 2022. So we want to make sure our story resonates with our consumers and it's relative and creative um, just like the example that we've shown. Um, and we do know that you know consumers do crave authenticity. I mean this is something that has been around a long time but probably now it's more prevalent than ever before. You know they're constantly being inundated with media speculation about different things. Uh, you know, we're all kind of going through that ourselves. Um, I'm very wary of kind of fake news and marketing and what to believe and what not to believe. So if, if nothing else, just make sure your story is the real deal, that it's authentic and it is the true you. You know, that's, that's what I would uh, kind of recommend uh, you take away from this today. Okay, Karen. So just a couple of examples here then of some of the brands that I've been working with um, just to kind of show how you can kind of get the emotion and really delve down into what makes you authentic. So this guy's Louis Ludic. Um, Louis was a uh, professional rugby player before Hellbent came, came to light and he just retired this year. So Louis and his family and his best friend kind of came to Northern Ireland to play rugby and they were so determined to make um, Northern Ireland their home. They've got young families. Um, they didn't want to go back to Northern Ar or, sorry, South Africa. They really wanted to stay here. So they knew that they had to make a business for themselves. So whenever we first met them, this came through so strongly. Before the Hellbent name was ever a thing, um, we sat down with them and really tried to get a grips with what their why was. Why, why did they want to create this food business? Uh, what was their aspirations for the future? Um, and we started to kind of develop the language around that first before we actually came up with the name. 
So it was all about that sense of determination. And then that was then transferred into the name Hellbent. Uh, so it's just kind of showing you, you know, if you're talking about rebranding or branding your business or kind of uh, maybe coming up with a new business or concept, make sure that you get kind of the language and the emotion and the heartfelt sincerity right first. And then that will lead into what the brand name or what you might start to create in terms of an experience uh, product as well. Another one here I'm going to show you is Glenarm Red Spark Lamb and another uh, local producer that I've had the privilege to work with. And uh, Eamon is up on the Antrim, no, sorry, the Glens of Antrim. Um, and he has a full time job, but he's also a farmer and his family have been farming for, I think, two or three generations. And he again kind of talked to us about why he did what he did. And it was because you know, his ancestors did what he did. So he was following on that tradition and looking after, you know, the land up there was something that was really, really important to him. And um, they looked after the animals um, and that was really part of his whole family culture. So we identified all of that in terms of what really drove him to do what he wanted to do with his with his new brand. Uh, before again, we came up with the name Glen Glenarm Red Spark Lamb. So Glenarm is the the townland, obviously, uh, which is now renowned for kind of uh, lots of different uh, artisan foods. But Red Spark was actually a name of a field. So the original name of the field was Reeds Park. But whenever Eamon was growing up, him and his uh, siblings actually couldn't pronounce Reeds Park, and it became a slang terminology that they called it Red Spark. So it was the Red Spark field. So we weaved that then into his story. So that really resonates for him. And certainly whenever we were doing the branding exercise with Eamon, he wanted a name that he could really go out and shout about and tell the story about. You know, he didn't just want to be Glenarm Lamb because anybody could be Glenarm Lamb. You know, the guy in the field next door to him could be Glenarm Lamb on the same plot. Um, so he wanted something that connected him deeply with what he was about. Hence, then it became Red Spark Lamb. Yeah, that's OK, Karen. So for 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 Eamon then his his whole brand has kind of evolved. So whenever he came to us, he started off as a farmer and a food producer. So he was selling cuts of lamb. He was looking at doing ready meals, premium ready meals, should I say? Um, but he's actually evolved into tourism, and he's got an awful lot of uh, support from uh, T and I and his council area. And he's really seen this as a huge opportunity to tell his story. You know, to tell the story of the people, the place, and the product, as we say here. Um, and we know that Glenarm is iconic, so he's got a lovely story to tell there about all of the other kind of artisan foods that come from there. So he's looking at creating uh, a new a new experience, which is going to be a converted barn and an outdoor cookery demo. Um, and that will run on, all, alongside, as we're saying here, his main kind of production business. So given his brand story right, believing in everything that he's about has given him the motivation, the aspiration and the energy to actually drive his business forward and then evolve into tourism, you know, over the like kind of like last 18 months or so. So it just shows you if you get it right, spend a little bit of time at the start, make sure you get it right. And um, it will give you that drive and energy then to, to take things forward. OK, Karen. So we know we've talked about what why we do what we do. We've talked about who we are and um, we've seen some examples of people have done that. So now it's really about then if we know who we are and what we're about, how do we who do we talk to about that? And that's all to do with defining your audience. So just a few wee things here to think about whenever you're defining your audience. Who is your typical customer? Um, who, who has come to visit you? Who is making the inquiries? Can you kind of come up with a persona or what they're about or who they are? Are they primarily families? Are they older adults? Um, you know, there's a lot of market segmentation has been done by T and I. Even recently, um, I sat on a webinar from, uh, which was all about the Republic of Ireland's market segments and how they've kind of evolved over the last number of years. So you can look at those kind of for inspiration, but just in general terms, just think about who your core customer is and how you would need to to speak to them. Um, and even if it's easy, again, just to kind of jot it down on the page. But it'd be interesting to look. Um, and I think I've talked about this before. You know the importance of gathering your customer customer information as well. You know, do you have some sort of spreadsheet or database that you can capture who it is that's coming to your to your visitor uh, experience? Because that will help you build up that customer persona or profile, which means then whenever you're starting to communicate them through your marketing collateral, you're talking to the right people that are interested in what you're about. Um, so other things to consider there, kind of things like their income, their education level, and what interests they might have outside. And the only way you're going to get this information is by talking to them. Um, and that brings us into, you know, kind of what we all are about as the, the Brian's giant spirit of Northern Ireland. 
So as I said, there is domestic market segments, um, which we've been focusing on over the, the last year or so. And these are well defined uh, within the Northern Ireland uh, domestic strategy. Documents again are on TNI. Um, and we'll move forward into, into 2022 to considering these uh, market segments. So just to highlight them, if anybody's kind of coming to this uh, webinar fresh and the other ones. OK. So the buyer's journey. So I thought this was an interesting uh, way to kind of look at things. Anybody who's been on these webinars before, they'll know that I like to put it up kind of in a few graphics because it works better for me remembering. So I hope it will for you too. Um, so whenever a buyer comes to your uh, kind of find out about your experience for the first time, they go through a number of stages. And there will be a number of times that they will, I suppose, uh, come into uh, contact with the touch points of your brand before they actually decide to book or or uh, make that sale. And you have to be aware aware of that, that it is quite a lengthy process. The first stage is awareness. So that's whenever they're kind of researching and finding out. So we're all on, you know, social media and Google every day of the week. So we have the capability, no matter what age we might be, um, to go on and have a look and see what's out there. So important then, if you're considering the awareness stage that you're, you know, you make sure that um, you maybe got blogs on your website, that your keyword searches will show up um, and that you're really active on social media so people can start to understand what you're about. That will help them kind of consider whether or not they want to book with you or book with somebody else. And then they'll start to kind of delve a little bit deeper into your communications. Maybe visit your website. They might send you that first email um, to ask a little bit more detail. They might phone. Um, but that's that kind of thinking about whether or not you're the right fit for what they want to do. Then we come to the decision stage um, and that's the book and that's the conversion that we talk about. So that can be done a number of different ways. Obviously, we can do booking online, telephone or through third party platforms, but they've made the commitment then that they're going to come and visit you. And then the final stage, which is really important, is that recommendation stage. So that's after they've come to the experience and what they actually think of it. Have you delivered on your brand promise? So all those things that they've learned about you moving through that process and they've read about you on your website, are you delivering on that promise? And that's what you need to ask yourself. Um, and it's all about then, you know, these word of mouth kind of marketing. We'll talk about, about that in a minute. Testimonials and reviews, so important in our industry. That's how people make the decision to book, you know, whenever they know that somebody else has enjoyed it, they've had value for money, they've experienced something they never imagined that they would. Um, and it kind of, uh, you know, you can't, you can't do enough really uh, than focus on that kind of testimonial review you stage. So just to show you then how, uh, just the next wee button there, um, uh, how we would view those people um, as they're moving through the stages. So in the first instance, they might be a stranger who's never come across you before, you've never come across them. Uh, the next stage, they're starting to become a visitor. They're a visitor to your website initially uh, and potentially then to your experience. Once they convert, they're the customer. And then once we go through the recommendation stage, then they're, they're the promoter. And, you know, we talk about brand advocacy uh, and people that are going to go out and sell your product on your behalf without even knowing it. Um, and that's where we want to get to. OK, Karen. So types of marketing collateral, just to cover this off quickly, we know that there's um, traditional marketing and digital marketing. Um, obviously, in this day and age, we're kind of, I suppose, uh, veering more into the digital arena versus uh, traditional marketing. But that's not to say that traditional marketing, marketing, likes of leaflets and newspapers and radio and all those type of things aren't still significant uh, part of any marketing plan. So you need to decide for yourself where you want to operate. Um, are you going to go down the traditional route? Are you going to do a blend of both? Do you just want to stay on social? And then whenever we look at social media, uh, there's so many different platforms. You know, whenever I put, started to present this one, TikTok wasn't as, as a big a thing and, and now it is. But choose the right social media platform for your business and for you, because we can't do all of them all at once. It's really difficult. It's really difficult to be authentic um, if you're trying to do too many of them because you're repeating the same message excuse me over and over again so just pick the one that fits you and the one that will help you con connect with that audience so you might find that your audience prefer to be on facebook because they're slightly older um or you might find that they're slightly younger they're like social instagrammers and they want to kind of hang out there but just do what's the right fit for you and in the background know that t and i are also you know they're the experts at this so they will be creating content for each of these platforms to suit each of the different market segments you know, so they'll have a strategy for the social. 
uh, Instagrammers. Uh, they'll have a strategy for TikTok, you know. So in, in the background, they'll be doing all of this for us, which is why it's really important then to use them to our best advantage. And if you do have any content that you want to share more widely about what you're doing, make sure you email it to them and let them do the job for you. OK, Karen. So website, just to kind of, um, for me, this is one of the most important things, I suppose, for our industry whenever people are coming to start to engage with you is to make sure that you have um, a fully functional website. And certainly if anybody is considering the Embrace a Giant Spirit criteria to become one of their collection of, of uh, featured uh, experiences, you need to have your website up and running. Um, and there's lots of support out there if you're not at that stage right now. And, and if you feel that you, you need to investigate that, get in contact with Karen and the team. Um, but websites are really, really crucial. So just three here to show you the ones that I've been working with uh, in the past. There's This is John from Mobile Team Adventure. I mean, John's business is very diverse and very wide. You know, tourism is just one part of it. But he's been able to, as you can see there, quite easily segment uh, what uh, he offers to each of the different customer groups. Um, so you can quite easily come in and navigate to see where you want to go. And obviously experience days would be what we would be looking at on this one. So that's John. Uh, next one is I think Tracy, is it? Yep, Tracy's Farmhouse Kitchen. Um, again, just keeping it simple. She's got her experiences there that, that you can drop down into to find out what she's about. Um, and again, she's telling her story on this website about her brand and what she's about. Um, and then the next one we have, I think, is, is it Jamesy? Yeah, so this is Jamesy's website. Um, again, keeping it simple, don't need to have too many tabs, but talking about those experiences. So making the experiences really easy to find on your website is something um, that you should consider doing as we prep here for 2022. OK, word of mouth marketing. So touched on this a little bit and I just wanted to throw up a slide just to show you some of the, the lovely comments that have been made uh, both within your area and kind of around Northern Ireland. And, uh, you know, you can see the value of these so important for people wanting to book your experience. So make sure you are on top of of, of your um, of your reviews, encourage people to make reviews for you. Um, and obviously you can do them on your own social pages. You can put them on your website. You can use TripAdvisor, as Barry has done here. Um, but they're really, really crucial. So if, if that's something that you haven't really thought about or you maybe think needs revisited, definitely think about doing that between now and, and the start of high season. Couldn't really do a presentation without mentioning Embrace the Giant Spirit. Um, and, and I know it sounds like a bit of a broken record now at this stage, but look, it's really important. This is our brand. This is our experience brand. And there's so much uh, wealth of uh, kind of knowledge and expertise that has gone into bringing this uh, uh, to pass for us to be able to use. So again, just a wee bit of encouragement. Um, Go back and revisit it as Karen and I did in one of the first sessions, you know, because we kind of realized stuff that we'd maybe forgotten about from the first time we'd heard about it. Um, but just make sure whenever you're talking about your brand and what your experiences are, that you do use some of the buzzwords that have been used in, uh, you know, set the tone for for the giant experiences. So talk about being big hearted and welcoming and, you know, how legendary we are and bringing those stories to life. There's so much guidance here uh, for you guys that you, you're not starting from scratch. So just encourage you to kind of have a wee review of that if you've got time as well. OK. Um, just again on the Embrace the Giant Spirit photography. So going forward into, into high season um, and gearing up for, for the next year, make sure your content, I mean, this is so important whenever you're telling the story about your brand because the content that you have will reflect everything that your brand is about. Um, and photography certainly is one way to do that. And there's guidance here from TNI, which you'll find in their toolkit, just giving you uh, some guidance in terms of what those images should be. So you never kind of want them to be overly posed. You want them to be very relaxed, showing people having fun, people communicating with you and um, make sure they're kind of high quality and show people really getting getting involved in your experience. So if photography is something that you need to think about and um, to update your website or your social media pages, now would probably be the time to do it um, uh, and get ready to really tell your story in the most authentic way that you can by showing people that's uh, out there doing what you love to do too. OK, so coming to the end now, and I'm glad to say because I think my voice is going to go, <laughs> starting to feel a wee bit croaky. Uh, so hints and tips on content creation. Uh, so just a wee summary, know your customer, know who you're trying to talk to, 
do create those buyer pers personas. Think about who they are and why they want to come to you. That'll help you communicate the language to them. Try and use user generated uh, content, uh, which is key for the tourism industry. So that's actually content that people have created for themselves um, and just share that widely. So if somebody's gone onto your page and shown them enjoying your experience or sent you some imagery, make sure to show that. Um, whenever you're doing your content, plan your posts. I know it's hard. Uh, we all find it difficult. Excuse me. Um, but make sure to try and plan them, even if it's just on a monthly basis, just so you've got some newsworthy content going up um, that's relevant because you'll be really, really busy once you get to high season and you'll not have maybe time to do it and pay it so much attention. So just kind of think about those themes as you're working through the year. Um, a must is really your quality photography and videography. It goes without saying it reflects everything that you are for a brand and then obviously use and embrace a giant spirit. So just a couple of wee, uh, hints and tips then in terms of your imagery and uh, where you can get some of this if you haven't got your own just now. There's a really good resource called Unsplash and it's a free Hey there, Lisa. Has Lisa frozen for everyone, folks, or just me? Frozen for me as well, Karen. It's frozen yeah. as well, yeah. 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 Come back, Lisa, come back. <laughs> she was on her last slide there. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, she might try and join us back now in a second. Um, I suppose, folks, yeah, look, I mean, she's just going to talk through those um, resources that are available for, you know, photography. And I mean, um, especially with the, the TNI um, content pool as well, that anyone can get access to and get those professional photos that will be on brand. So they're, um, they're all there for you to access. So um, and then Canva, of course, um, uh, and even I can use Canva. So um <laughs> If I can, hopefully um, everyone else would. But um, and even with the likes of Canva and stuff, that is the type of thing that we can give help and support with using if people, um, you know, were keen to use it and maybe we just were a bit unsure um, through our tourist specialist <laughs> programme. Are you back, Lisa? I'm back. I don't know what happened there. My, my Wi-Fi went down and um, we have a dedicated line in here. So that's really unusual. So oh. thanks for thanks for uh, yeah, taking I, up the link there, Karen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did what I can. <laughs> Oh, yes, about, off. Talking about uh, Canva. So yeah, Canva is a really good tool. Um, I use it myself because I'm not a graphic designer, but I would, you know, err in the uh, caution with it as well. It can be quite time consuming, um, but you know, it is there. It's a good tool. You can use it for free, um, or you can kind of sign up to the pro version. Karen, have you talked about the North the Northern Ireland content pool? Just very briefly to mention that it's there. It's obviously, yeah. you know, free content that's from across the region that is um, obviously going to be on brand. Um, so worth yeah. worth looking into. But Let's look at that. And then on Splash, as I say, have a wee look around that. Because even if you're looking for, say, if you were doing a bread making experience and you didn't have any imagery, you could put in, you know, bread making and you might get nice images somebody just using their hands or something like that, you know, if you wanted to, before you got your photography sorted out. So two, uh, three good resources there that you can kind of use. OK. Back to tourism in Northern Ireland then. Uh, if anybody isn't already signed up to the Business Hub, again, a wee bit of advice to do that. Um, and there's so much information on here. I mean, the, the, they've worked so hard and behind the scenes to give us all of this, these toolkits. Um, and I know it can be quite overwhelming because there's a lot on it, um, but you will find what you what, you know, lots of really, really kind of interesting stuff on there. Um, so we'd recommend looking at that. And then, yeah, this is our last slide then. I think we're just coming down into. So top things then to think about 2022. So we all know um, kind of prioritise hygiene and safety. So we're seeing that coming through, especially with the ROI marketing strategies. They were saying, you know, that's really, really important for older people whenever they're travelling, as well as the young families, just to make sure that uh, you're giving everybody the confidence that whenever they come to your experience, that protein or protein, pr uh, hygiene and safety is kind of the top priority for you. And obviously there's support with that, that the We Are Good To Go uh, kind of logo and scheme that's there as well. 
focus on local definitely without saying you know work with people in your location um, we're stronger together you know there's lovely lovely collaborative experiences kind of coming out as we're seeing there and you know that just gives people a reason to stay longer whenever there's such an abundance of of things to do um, and you're cross-referencing each other um, you know so that would be another kind of thing to focus on and then the last one then is um, yeah leisure I suppose that's the whole sense of relaxation and getting away from it there's going to be so many you know visitors next year albeit that you know they may be traveling to roi or across to gb or scotland but they'll not be going on necessarily their their usual european or american holidays um so we want to try and give them some of that here within northern ireland um and give them that kind of getting away from it all feelings if they've really had a holiday um you know in in our, in our destination and then finally yes i'm gonna leave you with another wee video um so this has just been released um, and it's lovely. It, it just tells the story of Ireland and it's going to be uh, launched in the States. This emerald green island where I was born is a kind of paradise. The ancestors of our famous saints and warriors came here about 12,000 years ago. Nowhere else does every brush with nature feel so intense, so full of life. Join writer Monaghan McGann and a group of young musicians as they embark on an unforgettable journey across the island of Ireland. From age-old cliffs and the rich heritage of their home comes a new and vibrant land, a new island. We Irish are redefining our heritage. We are, in essence, rediscovering who we really are. <laughs> Explore the fascinating culture and the wild, natural beauty of this ancient land. And fall in love with a world of enchanting mystery and adventure. Ireland, a film for IMAX and giant screen theaters. Yeah, so that's going to be launched in the spring uh, in the States, uh, which is just, you know, trying to convey this new Ireland, getting away from kind of anything that's a bit cliche that people might think about us, but obviously there to kind of encourage visitors back onto our shores again whenever it's safe to travel. So that's me rounded up. Um, I can take any questions now, Karen, or you want to leave it to the end or whatever, but um, lovely to have you join me on, on these sessions, these three sessions. It's been, uh, it's been good to see everybody. Yeah, I don't know if there are any questions there, as I say, I can't see, but um, thank you, Lisa, as always. Um, <coughs> um, and just, I suppose, to remind people that, you know, this, along with the other two sessions, um, they have been recorded. We will share the links out through our newsletter and we'll also post them to the Fermanagh Noma District Council YouTube channel, so they'll be there for, for reference. Um, doesn't Liam Neeson just have the best voice ever? <laughs> You're just totally using for everything, yeah. wouldn't you? <laughs> Brilliant. It's just incredible. Um, are there any questions coming through there, Tara? Is everything okay? We'll fire no, on. I haven't seen any come through yet. Okay, perfect. Um, we're going to fire on. Um, and folks, uh, Kathy hasn't joined us just yet. So um, I am going to... I'll do a very quick overview of Cathy's um, presentation. I had a chat with her earlier in the week about it, so um, I know what she wanted to, to talk through. And then hopefully maybe we'll get Cathy back at a later stage um, to talk through it. But I'll fly through it just to give you an insight into what um, Cathy has been working on. Um, 
so I suppose Kathy will go over and yeah, while dining. Um and the first thing I'm gonna do is just play a short video of um the the pilot that Kathy done for Wild Dining back during Festival Lock Earn up in Castle Caldwell in Balik. Um she ran a number of events, but um this kind of forest feast was the main, you know, the main one or the main concept that she wanted to work on and that she's um developing as we go forward. And um, so just play a short video to give you um an insight into what um go um so i suppose i mean obviously i'm not best placed to tell you how kathy's journey started but i'll do my best here i suppose um kathy is actually an artist she's a singer um and she is um a stylist and i suppose that's kind of her main bread and butter and it's a wee bit like what lisa was talking about um about the the glen park red spark lamb <laughs> isn't it um around how you know kind of started in a different area but saw something in tourism and is now venturing you know part of her business in into the tourism sphere um i suppose kathy i mean you know i suppose i mean being a creative essentially um and and working with kind of various styling things but i mean a lot of house and home things but very much a very um you know, close to nature kind of style, very rugged, very rustic. And that's kind of, you know, you'll see that right throughout um, the various things that um, that Cathy does. Um, her first kind of um, step into tourism was she had um, she had bought a boat with her husband and they were refurbishing this boat. And again, the whole idea was about um, bringing people to, to Fermanagh to experience the Lakelands. And again, it's not just like a a normal introduction to a boat or you know um, a cruising experience on Loch Arm, but it was very styled and very um uh, we talked about the social instagrammers i mean very instagrammable and you know just very nicely laid out um and as she started to progress that i suppose she started to look at um her, herself through her own journey was um working her way around various locations um across from Anna Lakelands um, and I suppose it you know it just I suppose she was looking for an opportunity to really share her love of the Fermanagh Lakelands and you know how and all the unique locations and the kind of away from it all that she she enjoys and loves and wanting to share that with other people and I suppose it probably for her coincided with um, obviously Covid um, and it made her re-look at what she was doing and you know what she wanted to do going forward um, so really, I suppose all that kind of culminated, I, I suppose, you know, a perfect storm, as you might say, and um, and, and with various programmes that we were then running um, through the council, she saw opportunities for her to kind of, I suppose, um, develop this kind of niche market for her wild dining. Um, huge, huge into sustainability. I mean, even, you know, her boat and everything that she does um, with the wild dining now is all about, I mean, even what she did at Castle Caldwell, it was all, you know, solar powered, electric. And, you know, uh, you saw in the video, you know, it's about uh, cooking on fire, do you know what I mean? And all this. So it's all very, um, in so much as, as we can be, um, want to be very uh, true to sustainability. Um, so I suppose all of those things kind of came together and um, she then, you know, developed this concept around wild dining. Um, I suppose what what Kathy's been great at is seeing what supports out there and um and working with the various providers out there to to help her to to hone her product and um hone the the experience that she's offering. Um, the first thing she did was there was a Locker and Landscape Partnership and the Geopark, the Culca Lakelands Geopark, together were offering a tour guiding course. So that was one of the first things um, that she participated in to see, you know, again, how she could hone her skills, her storytelling skills that we've heard lots about over the last uh, three webinars and before that. 
um, around, well, what is the story? What is she telling people? Um, and how is she connecting with them in terms of what it is that she's offering? Um, so she participated in that. And one of the, the you know, I suppose the assessment as part of that um course was to actually deliver um a tour which she did herself out of cleanish island and she learned an awful lot through that um and and she and i mean she would say herself that she still needs to continue to develop those skills but that she has come on um a long way and it gave her huge insight into into how to connect with the visitor um kathy then i suppose we had run um as part of the dira um rural tourism a collaborative experience program um, Kathy had attended um, an initial workshop where um, we were kind of just opening the floor to people in terms of what were the ideas, you know, explain what support was available through the programme and um, what her interests might be. Um, so I suppose that's where Kathy first kind of started saying, OK, we'll look at rather than, you know, offering an individual product on the boat or whatever it might be, I could now start to look at developing this into an experience. Um, that I offer on a regular basis um, and I suppose you know, looking at locations that she might hold it. But look, I suppose through the programmes, what she's been doing is saying, OK, well, how do I make this, um, you know, a, a viable business essentially going forward? Because ultimately that's what we're all trying to do, but um, allowing her to, you know, bring her creativity forward. Um, so through the DEAR programme and then the TNI Market Led Product Development Programme, which Cathy is a participant on now, um, really honing the, the, the business in terms of what the... Um, you know what the the root of the business is, how the brand, the marketing, the the selling platforms, all of those things that I suppose we've been talking about, um, and getting the support that she needs to to take that forward, um. Uh, again, Kathy would tell you herself too. In terms of being a creative, the the difficulty is to actually to hone that and to really kind of focus what she's doing. Um, she she has so many ideas, and there's obviously, I mean, we're blessed with stunning locations right across um for mana and and the far and um it's it's you know for her it's really finding the best location to run this on a regular basis and then obviously being able to have different tiers to her business to you know allow her to offer it out then for bespoke events or for private hire or whatever but that she has this main kind of core experience that she will she will deliver on a regular basis um and i suppose leading on from that um she had tried Castle Caldwell, went down really well. Um, but the thing I suppose with Castle Caldwell, there's a lot of, um, you know, infrastructure that's not there. So she had to bring in a lot of um, things, whether it be, um, you know, even the portal loose and things like that. So that's, I suppose, they're the considerations in terms of looking at the long term destination. Um, last night, as I say, and this is where Cathy was, was they did their first wild dining at the Marble Arch Caves. Um, and as I understand, was uh, well, I mean, it sold out, I suppose, first of all, in 24 hours. Now, it was a uh, uh, 20 person max, um, but at £85 pound, um, to sell out at, in 24 hours was a, a really good achievement. And it shows that the demand is there for this very, um, you know, authentic, different, but, um, you know, experience. Um, so there's uh, now these are only videos that Kathy sent me on WhatsApp, so they're not um, highly edited or <laughs> professional, but I'll just play them to give you a very uh, quick um, overview as to what last night would have been like. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's ever been down in the case and had a saxophonist um, playing to come to her. Guy, former guy from the hall, but very different. Um, so. See if I can play this one over here. So this is just um, showing you what the actual the tablescape, I think, is the correct term, folks, um, for what the setup was. And then the food was provided by Tully Mill or Lillianne, who have the catering at um, the Marble Arch Caves anyway. So I suppose, again, what you see in this here is around the collaboration. I mean, Cathy couldn't have done it all by herself. Um, and it's really good to see the collaboration between the businesses working together. And um, we've talked about this several times. I mean, we're a rural district and we're small businesses and um, this working together is what's, um, you know, allowing her to take her idea and concept forward. 
Um, so again, I understand a really good night last night, um, really well received. And as you can see, I mean, it looks absolutely magical and stunning. So um, hopefully that'll go ahead and go forward for, for Cathy. Um, so I know her intention is to continue with wild dining um, at the Marble Arch Caves and look at like a regular date to hold that as well as looking at other um, you know, locations to have it, uh, as I said, to, to put it on on a regular basis. Um, but I suppose just focusing now um, is through the support of the, the programmes that we're offering is really about focusing um, the business side of it. Um, you know, Cathy could do all day, every day, as I say, she could come up with creative ideas. So what she's trying to work on now is coming up with the actual, you know, the business model that's going to allow her to make a successful business going forward. Um, looking at more locations and, as I say, lots more creativity. So um, that's it. I know I wouldn't do it justice the same way that Cathy would, but um, I suppose from a, a destination point of view too, it's 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 a really nice offering for us to be able to to have in the district. Um, and it's something that, you know, again, working with other um, providers, whether it's accommodation, activity, you know, given opportunities to extend that stay, you know, this evening economy, nighttime economy, um, you know, this additional reason to stay, it's something that certainly people can work together to say, well, look, if you're coming to us for this, you know, this is something that you can do, um, uh, you know, in the evening, nighttime as well, and cer certainly something that there is demand for. So it's great to see it, and I, I wish her well going forward with it. Um, I'll probably I'll not take any questions because I can't answer them on behalf of Cathy. Um, but I think you'll agree it's um, it's a uh, it's a fabulous concept and she's doing great work um at the moment. So hopefully it'll go well for her and good luck to her with it. Um, so that's that. Um, Jack, are you happy now to jump in and talk about yours? Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Okay, so I'll uh, I'll be just talking about um, our Castle Archdale Boat Hire site and our Enniskillen site, which is Earn Adventures. Um, I am on my uh, year's placement from university and uh, I'm managing the two sites this year for um, the Bradshaws. So a wee bit about us. Um, Castle Archdale Boat Hire has been running now for over about 20 years, um, but it's not until kind of in the last you know four or five years that it's really um, took off. Um, part of this reason, um, from my understanding, would be that we have introduced the, our online booking system. So it allows people to view our products and prices um, all 24 um, seven. And it's a, it's a great way to attract in a lot more bookings as previously it had just been all um, manual. Um, and then I'm sure as, as a lot of um, the rest of you have found as well with COVID there, although it has really limited us and you know put a lot more restrictions on us in the way we can do things but um the whole staycation thing and uh, there's a lot more people staying local um, and that was a real boost to us this summer and helped us get over um you know times where we had to be shut because of covid um, i'm sure many of you are familiar with our hydro bikes there we introduced them in 2019 um, initially with 10 of them at our cast archdale site um, and then due to the popularity then um, we uh, we have increased the numbers there since so uh, so we then because of that popularity we opened up our earn adventure site it opened in um, may of this year um, and we really felt that um, round Enniskillen with it being the only island town in ireland that it was a it was an opportunity um, not to, not to put to waste. So um, we opened up a site there in Stuart's car park, um, or just out the Sligo Road there, and we've been operating it. Um, and you can do a full loop around the the town of Enniskillen. Um, but so it was really, really kind of just we felt that there's demand from tourism, and um, they kind of do that and just kind of bring bring something different to Enniskillen. Uh, next slide there, please come. On. Um, so I know I've touched on some of these already, but so what we really offer um, up at our cast our sales site is our main site. So we offer boat hire, paddle boarding, kayaking, canoeing, um, the hydro biking, and then bicycle and buggy hire as well. We're in the forest trails. Um, so that's what we're kind of doing, running up there. Um, we plan to bring something kind of new every year or something maybe that people haven't seen before. Just to keep it, um, just to kind of keep it uh, exciting, and you know, something, something just to attract new customers every year. Um, and then, an Enniskillen so far, it's just the hydro bikes. Um, but 
we um, will be maybe trying to do different things now in the future with this. Okay, next slide. And um, so one of the one of our newest attractions there would be the Hydro Bike by Lights experience. So um, just we really wanted to, or we really felt that there was a need for um, something for um, tourists to do in the in the evening time in Enniskillen. So and it worked kind of well with us for we wanted to um, for many of our staff it's only seasonal for them but there was a few um, um, of the staff that wanted to work all year round so we we're trying to we're so far around a skill and site is still open um, and we're planning to keep it going ahead now in the new year so the lights experience allowed us to um, allowed us to work now throughout these darker evenings and also give people you know a unique a, a unique way to see the town at night time as well um, and uh, they are uh, to be uh, to be honest it would be my if i was to do it myself it'd be my preferred way to do it it's definitely it's definitely a very cool way to see it um, and then it's just also promoting and uh, skill and um, evening tourism all right so next slide so another thing that we've started doing there now as well um, is our hydro bike and dine in collaboration with um, pat's bar um, so what we've tried to achieve with it um, is we're targeting families and um, couples uh, maybe for a date night or Christmas get togethers there now for staff parties um, and what we've been trying to do for that is that a group comes to us um, or even uh, a our family comes to us and uh, says okay so we'll five people for it they come to us we um, then take their food order and a few other wee bits of information and then they just They've um, worked all through our website, and so really, then they have a evening activity of the hydro bike um, by light session for an hour, and then they have a, a wee bit of time then to get up to Pat's Bar where they get a main meal and a drink, um, and that's really starting from thirty pounds ahead. So it's very, uh, in my opinion, it's uh, it's a very good um, good uh, deal for value, um, but. Unfortunately, COVID is, hasn't really helped us this Christmas. Um, just introducing the passport thing has put, we felt has put off quite a few groups from maybe do, taking part in it there. But there has been uh, has been quite a few groups that have went through it and have really enjoyed it. Um, and it's, I think it's working well for us and Pat's. Um, it allows us to uh, improve our business now in the kind of off peak season and even in off peak days of the week. Um, but that uh, that is really it. Um, so it's all we're always trying to push for something different, um, but we definitely enjoy our collaboration there with Pats, and would be keen to do it with all the businesses as well. For it's um, it's for we're all working really to the to the one um, to the one goal, um, but that's really it. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. That's super. Um, I think as well as well just to add that. Um, the guys um, are participating as well in the TNI uh, market-led program in terms of um, the the hydro bike and dine and um, other collaborative, you know, experiences. And again, you know, working through that mentoring and um, the the training and things to to perfect, I suppose the the experiences they're offering. I think this, I suppose, when you look at the hydro bikes, um, obviously they look fantastic and the lights is, you know, re really attractive. Um, when you think about the winter time, you know, you might think, oh gosh, going out in a, on the cold water. So I think that dining and getting in somewhere warm afterwards for a hot meal is a really good um, marketing tool and a really good um, collaboration. So uh, well done to the guys there and I hope it'll go, go well as you go forward. But sure, look, we all have to work through these restrictions and unknown and um all the rest of it at the minute but um i certainly think it's got um really good potential and hope it'll it'll go well for you as going forward um does anyone have any questions for jack could, could i just ask jack who came up with the idea of the hydro bike was that something that you had um research before doing it or was it just it, something um, we kind of came upon it there by accident well we're always keeping our eyes out there for something new um but uh, it was actually um one of the brothers that spotted it and um, it's a company they, they all come from america from uh, minnesota so we get them shipped over in containers and then they're fairly simple then just to to put together so they're as far as we know, um, they're the only ones kind of in Ireland that people are doing them in a similar sort of capacity to ourselves, um, 
Um, but I know there's a few people over in the mainland that are maybe using them, but that's uh, it was originally from America that we uh, we spotted them. Great. Good idea. Thank you. Jack, are the hard work? Is there no. <laughs> They're not too bad. The best thing is that you've no hills to get up, um, <laughs> so they're, fa they're fairly easy that way. But they're um, they're fairly straightforward. Some people, pardon? Do they have gears? They've no gears there, but a lot. You know, the loop around Enniskill in there, you have an hour to do it. Some people do it in forty minutes, and you know, feel really tired after it. But you know, if it took their time a wee bit, it, there's loads of time to get around on it, and uh, you know, with We've had children out on them from about eight years old, and we had a lady there a couple of weeks ago there who was 85 out on it, wow. um, and it was no problem to her. So it uh, it really it really can suit all ages. Yeah, it's excellent, great great experience. Really yeah. good. And can, can you fall? Can, I mean, can you fall? Is it could you possibly? <laughs> <laughs> you I'm just thinking of me going over and watching that. <laughs> no, they're they're fairly they're fairly stable. Um, there has been uh, up at our cast actually site. There's been one or two people that have fell off, but it's only just from mucking about there. But they're they're fairly stable. Great. And Thanks. what is the predominant age group that is going through? Like, is it particularly popular with like teenagers or twenties or whatever? Um. Well, what we can offer there with the hydro bikes is we have singles, um, which is just one person once, and we have tandem, um, as you actually can see, kind of in that. Uh, top picture there and um, just to the left of it um, and then we have one in with the side seat so it's just a, just a single there with a side attachment on for a child so what what their main groups are kind of coming through are families there um, with children and then there's a lot of lot of couples come out on them it's a, the, I wouldn't really say there's any kind of one age group I would say it's um, we definitely have a big variety of people. And how do you deal with like if the weather isn't great or if it's particularly choppy or maybe it just doesn't get that choppy? But how do you deal with that? Well, at our at our cast large sail site, um, we would uh, with the broad lock kind of blowing always straight into us. And um, there's times there's quite often that it is quite choppy there, but the marina is usually very sheltered, so um, we can uh, we just keep the hydro bikes in there. Our Enniskill, no, because it's uh, quite a sheltered area and the waterway is quite narrow the wind doesn't really affect us too badly. Um, but if, if it ever does have to call off or, you know, don't get me wrong, this time of year there's some awful evenings, um, we will just, uh, you know, give the group a chance to reboot to another date or, you know, or, or something along that um, lines. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. All right. Um, thank you for that, Jack. If there's, I mean, if there's any other questions, obviously folks, we can, um, you know, get the back to it a later time or you can contact the guys directly um, there if people are looking at um, opportunities to work together or anything as well, because obviously we want to promote as much of that as possible. But thank you very much, um, Jack. That was great. No um, and I say good luck with the, the rest of the season. And um, folks, I suppose just in general, if there are any more questions, um, uh, we this will be us now, I suppose. We Sorry, was that? Well, someone's gonna ask something there, no? Um, we will the next farm trip that closes out, I suppose, the the winter webinar series in terms of the creating demand generating sp experiences. Um, but just to to you know reaffirm that there are lots of um, support mechanisms available, and um, whether it's through council, through um, our marketing partners in Fermanagh Lakeland Tourism, um, and uh, and please, um, I think it's always important to remember that, you know, Fermanagh Lakeland Tourism represent both the Fermanagh Lakelands and Oman the Sparrow, Explore Oman the Sparrows, so um, lots of support there, and obviously through TNI as well, so if there's anything that you're um, considering or thinking of, um, please do, you know, just get in touch with us um, and ask us and we will do what we can uh, to help you or to, you know, direct you in the right way if we can. Um, we will likely, um, yeah, I will be going off um, in the new year for um, Bambino number three. So I might not see a lot of you now, maybe towards the end of next year, but um, Tara Farrell is here with us today and Tara will be taking on my maternity cover. Um, hopefully a lot of you are familiar with Tara already. Um, so Tara will be there and she's aware of all the programmes and all the supports that are there. So she will be more than happy to work with any of you um, to take things forward um, in 2022. Um, and then, as I say, we'll um, 
be running another, you know, a couple more farm trip Fridays before we get into the um and the busy season again next year as well. Um, in terms of webinars and things, as I say, we know that people are, you know, webinared out, but if there's any particular, um, you know, topics or subjects that you feel that you would like more information on, or would you like, you would like some insight on ahead of the the, the next season, please do get in touch with us and we'll happily look at um, putting that on for you um, if it's within, if it's within our, our gift and it's something we can do. Um, so please just, um, as I say, we can, we can only, provide it if you let us know that it's something that you need so um please keep in touch with us in that regard as well um and other than that i think um that's really us there's our there's we happy christmas from the council to you all um and as i say unless we have any other questions we will leave it at that folks and just thank you for joining us and wish you all a lovely christmas thanks Mary and karen happy christmas to you and good luck in january <laughs> thank you thank you i need it yeah <laughs>